Greetings, and thank you so much for joining the Bryn Mawr Community Church family in worship today as we celebrate God's love for us as extended through Jesus Christ. We hope your participation in this service will lift you up and encourage you and inspire you as we follow the path of Jesus Christ. May God continue to bless you mightily.
morning, Bredmar. This is your call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. And let the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. The Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations.
say praise the Lord let us go to the Lord in prayer Lord you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting you are God dear God in heaven we thank you for the privilege of prayer we come to the throne of grace once again with bowed down heads and humble hearts we acknowledge that we are not perfect and stand in need of your forgiveness we ask that you forgive us of our sins of omission and commission Replace these hearts of stone with hearts of flesh. Remove anything from our hearts that does not reflect your image. Revive us with your spirit. Create in all of us a clean heart and renew that right spirit within all of us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. 
We thank you for keeping the hedge of protection around us during this coronavirus crisis, oh God. We thank you for the vaccine rollout. We ask that you again heal our land from the violence that is occurring, oh God. Workplace gun violence, gun homicides on the streets. Uh, young people are getting shot and killed. Uh, there's a pipeline from the schools to the prison yards, oh God, due to gun violence. So God, we ask now that you would look over the balcony of heaven, oh God, and do something uh, to reverse uh, the curse of gun violence. We ask that you continue uh, to heal the sick, oh God. We ask that you, we pray for those on the sick and shut-in list. We pray for those who are uh, facing major health challenges. We pray for those facing major surgeries, oh God. Remind them that you still are Jehovah Rapha, a God that is in the healing business. We know that you are a very present help in the time of trouble. We look to the hills from whence cometh our help. All of our help comes from you who made heaven and earth. Continue to keep a hedge of protection around our children, oh God. We thank you for those children and youth who have come home from college, oh God. Keep them safe in this violent land that we live in. Continue to keep Brenmar Community Church spiritually fortified while they are sheltered in place and also keep the church financially strong as well because we know that to bless your house means you're going to bless our house. So bless every member of Bryn Mawr Community Church under the sound of my voice. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. This is our prayer in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The title of Reverend's Woolery's sermon today is As Long As I Have Jesus. And our scripture lesson is taken from the books, book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Peter heals a lame beggar. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, 
at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us! So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do give you, I have to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk! Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is a word of God for the people of God. Let the church say, man, it is preaching time. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God in heaven, again, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for this preaching opportunity. I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my rock and my redeemer. Hide me behind the cross of Jesus that your people would see him and not me. Take me down inside of your treasures of truth called the gospel. And raise me up as a new creature, one who boldly proclaims the word of the Lord. Let me decrease while you increase in my body. Therefore, take my mind to think your thoughts. Take my mouth to speak your words. For truly, we have waited to hear from heaven, O God. Therefore, do not disappoint us. It is in the mighty, matchless, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And for his sake we live. Let all of God's children say, Amen. Let me direct your attention to the book of Acts, chapter 3. Verses 1 through 10 have already been read. I want to focus our sermonic spotlight on verses 6 through 8. Verses 6 through 8. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he... Leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. The word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to preach just for a few minutes on the subject as long as I have Jesus, as long as I have Jesus. As we are preparing to return to our church buildings for in-person worship after being sheltered in place for the last 15 or 14 months, uh, the Lord brought to my attention a conversation I had over a year ago with my ministerial mentor, the Reverend Robert Bailey. In this conversation that I remember so vividly, he said that at the start of the pandemic, when the churches were shut down, he said, Charles, I got to tell you something. The Lord just gave me this fresh revelation from eternity. He said that back in the Hebraic times, he said the people put God in a box in the form of the Ark of the Covenant when Joshua crossed over the Jordan River into the Promised Land. God symbolically was in that box. He then fast forwarded in Hebrew history and then he reminded me that Solomon built God a temple which was nothing more than a larger box and then he says now that we have our modern church buildings those are boxes as well but since now that the box the boxes have been closed he says churches that are going to serve he said that churches that are going to survive the pandemic shutdown will be churches that end up taking God out of the box and still doing ministry within their community in spite of their church buildings being closed. In other words, if I were to unpack the analogy that Reverend Bailey gave me over a year ago, it simply suggests that we have to make a paradigmatic shift from just worship in buildings 
to service in our communities. In fact, when we could not worship in person, some people said, well, the church the church is closed, but guess what, baby, Baba? The church has never been closed, even though the building has been closed. Because if you think about it, the church does not, the church is not a building, but the church are the people of God. In fact, the Greek word ecclesia means the called out, where we get the word, the modern word church from. And so the church has never been bricks and mortar, but the church is the people called by God, anointed by God, and sanctified with God's spirit. So even though we have been forced out of the church building for worship, the church work has never been closed down. In fact, the mission of the church still continues. Guess what that mission is, Bryn Mawr. The mission of the church is to still make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our world. Yes, Reverend Bailey was indeed right and still is right. We must make a paradigmatic shift from just worshiping and thinking that we're doing the Lord's will when we have should be outside of these four walls of brick and mortar and be in our communities making a difference. We must be engaged in in service, even though the buildings are closed. That leads us to our text of transforming truth because as long as we have Jesus, we don't need a building to be the church. As long as we have the spirit of Jesus living inside of us, we can do life changing and life impacting ministry within our communities. Look at what our text of transforming truth has to say. It says that Peter and John are on their way to the temple for prayer. I like that. Two black men, two brothers, not on their way to the strip club, not on their way on their way to the bar, not to the pool hall, but they're on their way to the temple for the hour of prayer. You do know the importance of the importance of prayer, the power of prayer. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Prayer is a spiritual discipline that all Christians should engage in. Yes, but guess what? As they are on their way to the temple for prayer, a ministry opportunity occurs outside of that church building. You didn't hear me. They encounter a lame man who was begging, that was his profession. His handlers put him at the beautiful gate of the temple every day so he could make money, not just for himself, but also for his handlers. Here is this lame man begging. He's been, the text says he's been lame since birth, and Peter and John walk by him. All of a sudden, Peter looks at him using a sanctified imagination. The lame man looks at Peter as if Peter was going to give him some silver or some gold, but Peter Peter says, hey, look at us. He says, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, I give it unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The text goes on to say that immediately, that when Peter gave him his right hand, immediately the man took his hand and his ankle bones and leg bones got strength. And the man was able to stand up on his own two feet. The text goes on to say that he was leaping and praising God, thanking God for healing him because after all he had been lame since birth never knew the power or the euphoria that comes from being able to walk on your own two feet but let me not get ahead of myself here it is a ministry opportunity not inside of the church building but outside of the church building Peter says to him there's some things that money cannot buy in fact we in fact he tells the he tells the lame man money won't help you in this situation can I hang out there for just a minute. Many times we think money is the answer to all of our problems. We think if we had more money, our lives would be better. That's not so. Look at the two most richest people on the planet, the Bezos family, the Bezos couple. They got a divorce. Uh, Bill and Melinda Gates have all the money in the world. They're getting a divorce. Money can't buy. There's some things money cannot buy. Money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy peace. Money can't help you enjoy life. Money is just money. Dead presidents printed on printed on paper. There's some things that money cannot buy and money will not solve your problems. But guess what? I know who can solve your problems. Jesus can. So Peter says to this lame begging man, he says silver and gold I don't have but such as I have I give it unto thee. That word such is in the King James Version of the Bible. Such. I'm reminded by, by Reverend, Reverend, uh, Reverend Cosby. 
Uh, Marcus Cosby tells the story that when he was in Chicago, his pastor in Chicago preached the same text and he said everybody should have some such. Amen. You may not have a lot, but everybody should have some such as I have. Everybody should have something to give to somebody. Your such could be the gospel of the good news. Your such just could be a kind word, a few dollars out of your pocket. Your such could be something that encourages somebody to stand on their own two feet. In fact, God has given everybody something and that such is the power of the name of Jesus. That's what Peter used. Peter says, such as I have, I give it unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Peter, all he had was the name of Jesus. Wow. Can I hang out there too? In antiquity, a famous person's name was was believed to conjure up his presence, his authority, and his power. And so somebody as powerful as Jesus, all Peter had to say was, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the believers believed that when you called on the name of Jesus, his presence, his power, and his authority was available. And that's how that man got healed. All I need is Jesus. Notice, if you will, that the healing did not take place in the church building, but it was outside. Therefore, we must understand that we as a church, even though the buildings have been shut down for more than 14 months, the ministry still must continue outside. As long as I have Jesus, as long as we got the power of his name, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, as long as we have that, we can impact lives just like we did before the pandemic shut shut down the church. In fact, look, if you will, again, this miracle occurred outside. And if you think about it, as Christians, which means to be one with Christ, uh, uh, all Jesus all, most of Jesus' miracles were performed not inside but outside the church and outside of the synagogue. Where was he when Jesus fed 5,000 with the lad's lunch? He was outside. Where was he when he healed the man who was paralyzed for 38 years? He was outside. Where was he when he told Lazarus, Lazarus, rise up and come forth? He was outside. Where was he when he healed 10 lepers from leprosy? He wasn't inside a church building, but he was outside. Where was he when he healed the woman, when he raised the, the widow of Nain's son? He wasn't inside a funeral home, but he was outside where he, when he stopped that funeral procession and said, boy, rise up and go back home and take care of your mama. Jesus did most of his ministry and miracles outside. Therefore, church, where should we be? We should be Outside, outside feeding the hungry, outside clothing the naked, outside trying to prevent violent acts from occurring around our beautiful church buildings. Where should we be? Outside going after children who need to be in somebody's church family. Where should we be? Outside trying to encourage somebody to not engage in a life of violence but to pick up God in their lives. Where should the church be we should be outside and maybe maybe it was God's plan to make sure that the churches were closed down so we could engage in a paradigmatic shift so we can shift our attention from just worshiping in a building to working outside in our community. Preach foolery. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Maybe this is one way that God turned our midnight into a highlight before we did not want to go out in the community to perform acts of service but because the buildings were closed it forced us to go outside. I'm so glad that one particular ministry event that we did here at Wesley United Methodist Church was we were deciding how we could best impact our community during a pandemic and guess what we decided to gather uh, to get 300 pa to uh, gather uh, 300 pandemic bags to fill them with essential items and pass them out to 300 of our neighbors and you know what happened once we went outside and did some work outside we got countless cards from our concerned citizens that live around our 
our church. And these cards simply said, thank you, because thank you for the pandemic bag. Thank you for being a blessing to us as a community. We thank you for being a neighbor in our neighborhood. And so that was some good news that we needed to hear because we have been trying to find out how we could impact our community during this pandemic. And simply God peered over the balcony of heaven and said, get out of the four walls and become a service oriented church. Yes, that's all I'm trying to suggest to you, Bryn Mawr, is that while we are still sheltered in place, you still should engage in service. You still should engage in making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. Well, let me rush on. I'm almost done now. Uh, so the lame man, he is not lame anymore. He's got power. He's leaping. He's jumping up. He's praising God. And don't you know, Peter and John were on their way to the church and they saw this lame man, that lets us know that lame, lame people live all around our church. They live around Wesley. They, they live around Bryn Mawr, lame, not, not physically lame, but spiritually lame. They, they're, they're lame, and all we have to do is look at them. They're all around our church. We have lame children, children lame since birth who have never stepped foot in a church. They need to be in somebody's Sunday school when we reopen up. There are lame teenagers who who have never been involved in a youth group since birth. There are people, there are the underserved and the underprivileged. There are the poor, there are widows, there are orphans. There are people that need to hear the gospel of the good news. They are spiritually lame. They need to be resurrected. They need to be revived with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they exist all around us. All we have to do is take the time to see see them. There's more to being a Christian than assembling every Sunday for worship once we come back. There's more to being a Christian than listening to a, and watching a virtual worship service. Don't you know that we have work to do? The mission of Jesus Christ still continues even though the building is closed. Yes, let me say it one more time. We've got to make a paradigmatic shift from just worship to works to become a service or entered congregation, my own congregation, and even Bryn Mawr, because the text says that when they went, before they got to the church, they healed that man. There was a ministry opportunity. All I'm suggesting to you, Bryn Mawr, is to check out the ministry opportunities that exist around your beautiful church and decide to make a difference because you got power as long as you have Jesus. As long as you got the spirit of Jesus on your side, you got power, and then on that great getting up morning God will you'll stand before Jesus on judgment day and he'll ask you what did you do to the least of these and you can say we fed the hungry we we clothed the naked we we welcomed the stranger we visited the sick we visited those who were in prison we gave a drink of water to those who were thirsty we ministered to the least of these even when the church building was closed and then you can testify like the songwriter said if I can help some Somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show someone they're traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. As long as we have Jesus, we've got power to impact our communities in spite of closed church buildings. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. What a wonderful worship service we've had. Bryn Mawr Community Church. Amen. To God be the glory. Now receive the benediction. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, power, majesty, and dominion forever and ever. And the church said, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time God is good.
Thanks so much for joining Brentmark Community Church's online worship service. To learn more about our ministry, visit us on the web at brentmarfaith.org. There you can give in support of our ministry by clicking Donate to BMCC. You may also drop off or mail your generous gifts to Bryn Mawr Community Church, located at 7000 South Jeffrey Boulevard in Chicago, Illinois, 60649. If you're having difficulty leaving your home, you can make arrangements for your offering to be picked up by one of our trusted members at Bryn Mawr by dialing 773-324-2403. 